Mike here in the lab side of R&D lab and we're gonna go over some hump day hacks. So last week's hack, we actually set this system up and got pretty much the lattice assembled with no electronics. So the next step to really make this system a nice base before putting glassware on it is to set up all of our electronics, not only for one, of course, power, but also for good locations within the system and for Elite Lab connectivity. So I'm gonna go ahead and begin, starting with the controllers. So the first device we're gonna install is the DTM-1 temperature monitor. So this is a single channel temperature monitor that uses a K-type input as USB output. And our newer models have an external power supply for UL compliance. This is an older one. These I typically put up in this top left corner. Rests right on the rod quite nicely. The reason I like to put it up there is because it's the vapor temp, which is measuring the, top, the temperature in the top of the distillation. And so getting it up and out of the way, but in a spatial location that makes sense on the system helps with you know, actual user association. Next, I'm gonna grab our dual channel PVM2 vacuum monitor. This is basically two bullseyes in a box. We got USB outputs here, sensor inputs here, power. This also has an external power supply for UL compliance. This one I typically put in the far right of the system. Because this is where all the probes are and this is where the vacuum system attaches to the system. So again, spatially, it makes the most sense. Next piece, I'm going to put the DSC-1, which is our digital stir controller. Um, we recently actually switched these over to external power supplies as well, also for UL compliance, um, and switched all of our motors on our mantles to 24 volts so you can actually switch between uh, 110 and 220 volts with no issues. This one I typically put underneath the vapor temp or the DTM one, just because again, spatial organization. I feel like this is a good spot for it. Some people like to put this one up here, over there, wherever you want to put is fine. While I'm at it, I'm gonna go ahead and connect the three pin connector for the stir control. So you can see you have to line up that notch and the three pins at the, with the bottom plug on this mantle right here. So essentially, And then it's a twist lock. So we'll just, boom, nice and connected. To do some good wire management, typically I'll take the extra and kind of stick it in there. So we just finished connecting our stir controller. And the last piece of electronics that we're gonna put on is our TCM1, which controls our mantle temp. So this again also has one K-type input, two outputs, one for the bottom, one for the top mantle, and USB. This I typically put right here so that I can actually put my lab jack on and that'll be an effort to receive the receiving flask as it comes down. So my bottom mantle is going to be a twist lock connector. Um, some people don't like to connect the mantle to the controller unless you're actually doing the distillation, which makes a lot of sense. This knob here will also serve the same purpose. If you have it set to 0%, there's no chance of the controller sending power to the mantle. So, as long as you don't plug this into the wall, which is something that people have done, um, you won't have any issues. Just like that. And this wire gets ran. Next thing I can do is set up my vapor sensor. Yeah, it's a little out of order, just based on the parts I'm grabbing. I'm going to go ahead and just set that there. And then I leave my vapor temp right here. So it's very important to have sensor one connected to sensor one on this controller. They're calibrated to the gauge. So I can vary sensor. Right here. Next we're gonna start running some USB wires. So running the USBs for this is gonna depend if one, you're connecting this to a single Elite Lab core computer that we send, and in which case it's super simple because we already pre-wire the USB hub down to a location right where the actual mounting apparatus mounts to your desk, so it's super simple. But today I'm going to set it up as if I don't have only that core kit because I'm using more makeshift one. So um, I'm going to run these USB B wires from each of these controllers to a central location hub where the USB port will um, connect to the computer. And then for those, it's going to be mini USB, 
without going to the own hub over here, which then will connect to the main hub. Our whole purpose is, is to make sure that your wires are cleanly managed so that you're not making a mess, especially in a laboratory where you know you want to have zero hazards. Another thing we use is we'll use wire loom. Um, we sell this and we also give this with our lead core kits to kind of wrap up and manage your wires a bit. So for this next part, you guys are going to just see me kind of moving around and plugging things in and then afterwards I'll show you what it all looks like. Now I've got all my power wires and all of my actual USB wires ran, I'm going to go ahead and put my thermocouple wires in place. That's the last thing I'm going to do prior to assembling the system. Typically, I will run the thermocouple around the back side here, so it's not interfering with anything. Utilize the rod clamps to kind of direct the wire a little bit. And then to make sure there's no tension on where the thermocouple attaches to the mantle, go ahead and wrap around there. So now I'm ready to go. And then for the temp vapor temperature monitor, I'm going to do the same exact thing. Alright, so that's going to be a fully assembled system with all electronics only, of course. So fully assembled electronics and clamp and whatnot. So as you can see, I've got my USB wires and my power wires coming through this nice wire loom. All my USBs come to here. On this side, it's a little messier. I have expansion for another temp controller if I'd like. So either a dual channel temperature controller or a temp temperature monitor. Um, got our USBs plugged in here and running across the table. Pretty much have my system completely ready for action. That'll conclude today's hump day hack.